So what if South America, Texas, California, Quebec, and other places were all independent countries? Today, we'll answer those questions and many more. The following segments have been created throughout the past five months, so enjoy. So what if Canada joined the United States? When you put the United States together with Canada, you get a country that's about 11 United Kingdoms bigger than Russia, the current largest country in the world. Adding 37 million Canadians would bring the US population to about 370 million, cementing its third place spot. Canada is made up of 10 different provinces and three territories, meaning that we can add 10 stars to the flag, one for each province. Of these provinces, Ontario is the most populous with over 14 and a half million residents. It would be the fifth most populous state in the country behind New York, Florida, Texas, and California. The GDP of the new United States would be over 22 and a half trillion dollars. But far more important than any of that, American maple syrup production would go from over 4 million to over 15 million gallons per year. So what if South America united into a single country? To start, Brazil is already the fifth largest country in the world. Altogether, South America would be the largest country in the world, about three United Kingdoms bigger than Russia, the current largest. Its GDP of about 4 trillion puts it just above Germany and fourth place overall behind Japan, China, and the United States. This flag might be used for the new nation as it's already the flag of the Union of South American Nations, which is sort of just like a dead version of the EU in Europe. As for a capital, they might choose somewhere like Brasilia, which is already the capital of Brazil, or they might choose to build a brand new capital somewhere else. A United South America would have 423 million people, putting it ahead of the United States and into third place overall. Spanish would be the most spoken language with about 210 million speakers. Portuguese, however, wouldn't be far behind with about 206 million. So what if Texas was its own country? The Republic of Texas would be home to 29 million people, making it the 49th most populous country in the world. The Texan GDP of over $1.7 trillion would make it the ninth largest economy in the world ahead of countries like South Korea, Canada, and even Russia. Texas is home to some major companies like Exxon, Dell, American Airlines, Chevron, AT&T, Comerica Bank, and now even Tesla. Texas is comparable to the size of Ukraine and as a country would be the 40th largest in the world ahead of Myanmar and behind Zambia. There are currently 164,000 Texans serving in the U.S. military, giving Texas a military size similar to that of Israel. Texas would be the fourth largest oil producer in the world behind only the United States, Saudi Arabia, and Russia, but ahead of countries like Canada, China, the United Arab Emirates, Brazil, Iran, and Kuwait. Do you think Texas could survive on its own? So what if California was its own country? The California Republic would be home to over 39 million people, making it the 37th most populous country in the world, ahead of countries like Canada and Australia. California's massive GDP of over $3.57 trillion is already the largest in the United States and would be the fifth largest in the world behind only Germany, Japan, China, and the United States. California's GDP would beat out countries like the United Kingdom, India, France, Italy, Canada, and South Korea, all by large margins. California is also home to some of the world's largest companies, including Apple, Google, Facebook, Twitter, Visa, Wells Fargo, Uber, and many, many more. California's land area of 163,000 square miles puts it in 60th place overall, just ahead of Paraguay and behind Iraq. California will probably continue to use this flag as it's already super iconic and was inspired by its original flag. Do you think California could survive on its own? So what if the Soviet Union reunited today? The Soviet Union would span over 8 million square miles, making it the largest country in the world ahead of the United States and Canada. The Soviet Union would be home to 289 million people, making it the fourth most populous country in the world ahead of Indonesia, but behind the United States, India, and China. The Soviet GDP of $2.8 trillion would mean that it would take about eight Soviet Unions to equal the GDP of its biggest competitor, the United States. However, the Soviet Union would take the United Kingdom's fifth place spot for the largest GDP. The Soviet Union's largest cities would be Moscow and Russia, followed by St. Petersburg, followed by Kiev and Ukraine, Tashkent and Uzbekistan, and Minsk and Belarus. The Red Army would have about 1.45 million active duty soldiers, beating out America's 1.38 million active duty soldiers, but lagging behind China's 2.18 million, the largest in the world. Do you think the Soviet Union could survive in today's world? So what if Yugoslavia reunited today? Yugoslavia's population of just under 21 million would make it the 59th most populous country in the world, behind Sri Lanka and ahead of Burkina Faso. The five largest cities of Yugoslavia would be Belgrade, followed by Zagreb, Sarajevo, Ljubljana, and Skopje. Yugoslavia's GDP of over $207 billion would put it in 51st place overall, ahead of Peru, but behind New Zealand. Its GDP per capita of just under $9,900 is similar to Kazakhstan. Its land area of 98,766 square miles is very similar to that of the United Kingdom. This would make it the 79th largest country in the world, ahead of Guinea, but behind Gabon. Each year, Yugoslavia would spend $2.2 billion on its military, similar to Nigeria's $2.15 billion. It would also have 230,000 soldiers, similar to Saudi Arabia's 227,000. Do you think Yugoslavia could survive today? So what would happen if NATO united into a single country? NATO's home to some of the world's most developed countries, including the US, Canada, Germany, France, UK, and many more. Altogether, NATO's GDP would be over $43 trillion. This would mean NATO's economy would be the largest in the world, far ahead of second place China. Its massive GDP would mean that NATO would account for over half of the world's economy. Within NATO, the largest contributors to this GDP would be the United States, Germany, UK, and France. NATO would be about 9.5 million square miles, making it about 31 United Kingdoms larger than Russia, the current largest country in the world. NATO would have about 3.5 million active duty soldiers, making it the largest military in the world. NATO would be home to almost 1 billion people, making it the third most populous country in the world.
the world. Do you think NATO could survive as a country? So what would happen if Cascadia was an independent country? Cascadia would be made up of the province of British Columbia, the state of Oregon, and the state of Washington. Together, Cascadia would be home to almost 17 million people, making it the 70th largest country in the world, just ahead of Senegal, but behind the Netherlands. As for a capital city in British Columbia, Victoria would be a great option. It is home to a beautiful parliament building, which the government could use, and it's close to the nation's two largest cities, Seattle and Vancouver. Cascadia would be home to major companies like Boeing, Nike, Costco, Windows, Starbucks, and Amazon. Cascadia's GDP would be just over $1 trillion, putting it in 15th place overall, just behind Spain, but ahead of Mexico. Cascadia's GDP per capita, or per person, of just over $64,000 would put it in 13th place overall, behind Singapore, but ahead of Kangaroo Land. Cascadia's size of 534,530 square miles would make it comparable to Mongolia and Peru. Do you think an independent Cascadia could survive on its own? So what would happen if New England was an independent country? New England would be made up by the states of Maine, Massachusetts, Rhode Island, Vermont, New Hampshire, and Connecticut. Together, New England would be home to over 15 million people, making it the 74th most populous country in the world, just ahead of Zimbabwe, but behind Somalia. New England's GDP of $1.14 trillion is similar to that of Indonesia's $1.15 trillion, despite it having just a fraction of the population. This would put its GDP in 17th place overall ahead of countries like Iran, the Netherlands, Saudi Arabia, Switzerland, and Turkey. Its enormous GDP per capita, or per person of $77,000, would put it in 9th place overall, ahead of some very wealthy nations like the US, Iceland, Denmark, and Singapore. New England would actually be larger than the OG England and would be the 89th largest country in the world. As for a capital city, Boston would most likely be chosen as it would be the nation's largest city. Do you think New England could survive on its own? So what would happen if the Confederacy reunited today? The CSA was made up of 11 different states including Texas, Alabama, Arkansas, South Carolina, North Carolina, Virginia, Mississippi, Louisiana, Georgia, Florida, and Tennessee. A modern-day Confederacy would not practice slavery as it would be more than likely blown off the face of the earth. The CSA would be home to over 110 million people, making it the 13th most populous country in the world ahead of the Philippines but behind Ethiopia. The U.S. population would go from about 333 million to about 222 million, lowering its third place ranking to fifth place overall. The Confederate GDP of over six trillion dollars would put it in third place overall behind only the rest of the U.S. and China. Its GDP per capita or per person of about sixty thousand dollars would make it comparable to Sweden and the Netherlands. But the U.S. GDP per capita would actually grow from about sixty-nine to about seventy-three thousand dollars. As for a capital, Austin might be chosen as it's already the capital of Texas and is one of the fastest growing cities in America. Do you think the CSA could survive today? So what if Korea reunited today? Today, Korea is divided into two nations in both the North and South. The North is home to about 25 million people, where the South is about double that at 51 million. Together, Korea would be home to about 77 million people, making it the 20th most populous country in the world ahead of Thailand, but behind Germany. North Korea's lousy GDP of just $27.4 billion would mean that it would take about 60 North Koreas put together to equal that of South Korea's over $1.6 trillion. Because of this, a United Korea's GDP would only grow to $1.65 trillion, meaning that it would surge ahead only one place ahead of Canada's $1.64 trillion. North Korea's 1.2 million active duty soldiers in combination with South Korea's 555,000 would give United Korea over 1.7 million active duty soldiers, making it the second largest active duty military in the world behind China, but ahead of the US and India. Do you think Korea could reunite? So what if the Baltics united into a single country? The Baltics are made of three nations, Latvia, Lithuania, and Estonia. They would have a combined population of roughly 5.8 million people, making a Baltic Union the 115th most populous country in the world ahead of Denmark, but behind Singapore. Its GDP of about $147 billion would make it the 60th largest economy in the world ahead of Morocco, but behind Kuwait. This would give it a GDP per capita or per person of about $25,000, making it similar to Portugal and the Czech Republic. The Baltic landmass of about 67,000 square miles would make it similar in size to countries like Tunisia and Syria. It would be the 92nd largest country in the world, larger than Suriname, but smaller than Uruguay. They would likely join NATO as Latvia, Lithuania, and Estonia are already members. As for a capital, Riga is a likely option as it's home to the Baltic Assembly and is already the capital of Latvia. Do you think a Baltic Union could survive? So what would happen if the European Union united into a single country? To start, its population of roughly 450 million people would make it the third largest country in the world, surpassing the United States and being behind only India and China. The largest contributors to that population would be Spain, Italy, France, and Germany. The EU's huge GDP of over $18 trillion would make it the second largest economy in the world ahead of China but behind the United States. In this category, the largest contributors would again be Spain, Italy, France, and Germany. The EU's GDP per capita of about $41,000 is similar to that of the United Kingdom and Japan but notably behind places like the United States and Norway. Its total landmass of about 1.6 million square miles would make it the seventh largest country in the world, larger than India but smaller than Australia. It would take about four EUs to equal the landmass of Russia, the world's largest country. As for a capital city, it'd most certainly be Brussels, Belgium, as the EU headquarters are already located there. Do you think the EU could survive? So what if Quebec broke away from Canada? Quebec is the second most populous Canadian province and is home to over 8.5 million people. As a nation, it would be the 102nd most populous country ahead of Togo, but behind Switzerland. Canada's population of almost 37.9 million would fall to about 29.3 million. Quebec's $284 billion GDP would make it the 50th largest economy in the world ahead of New Zealand, but behind Romania. It's also notably just ahead of Elon Musk's net worth. Its GDP per capita of $33,000 is most comparable to countries like Malta, Italy, and South Korea. Quebec's landmass of about 600,000 square miles is equal to about 6.5 UKs put together. This makes it the 20th largest country in the world
world ahead of Peru, but behind Mongolia. Quebec City would be the nation's capital as it's already the provincial capital. Within Quebec, 4.7% of the population speaks only English, 51.8% of the population speaks only French, and 426 speak both English and French. Do you think Quebec would survive on its own? So let's see what would happen if Benelux was a country. Benelux is a region in Europe made up by the three countries of the Netherlands, Belgium, and Luxembourg. Belgium is home to well over 11.5 million people, the Netherlands has over 17.7 million people, and Luxembourg is home to around 645,000 people. This would make Benelux home to a little over 30 million people in total and have a 0.6% annual population growth rate, making it the 49th most populous country in the world. Adding together the land areas of Belgium, the Netherlands, and Luxembourg would give Benelux a land area of 28,945 square miles or 74,967 square kilometers and make it the 117th largest country in the world. Belgium's GDP of almost $610 billion in combination with the Dutch GDP of just over a trillion dollars and Luxembourg's almost $87 billion would give Benelux a relatively large GDP of over $1.7 trillion and make it the world's 14th largest economy. Benelux would have a GDP per capita of $56,838, making it similar to countries like Finland, Israel, and Canada. Do you think Benelux could survive as a country? So let's see what would happen if Catalonia broke away from Spain. As a nation, Catalonia would be home to over 7.7 .7 million people and have an annual population growth rate of about 0.01%, making it the 102nd most populous country in the world. This also means that Spain's population of about 47.4 million would fall to 39.7 million, which is a loss of about 16.3% of its population. Catalonia's capital and largest city of Barcelona is home to 1.62 million people, which would be about 21% of the nation's population. Catalonia has a land area of 12,397 square miles, or about 32,108 square kilometers, making it the 136th largest nation in the world. This would cause Spain's over 195,000 square miles to fall to just under 183,000 square miles, or from about 506,000 square kilometers to 473,000 square kilometers, which is a loss of about 6.3% of its land. Catalonia's GDP of $256.5 billion and GDP per capita of $33,217 would make it the world's 51st largest economy. Spain's GDP would drop from $1.44 trillion to about $1.18 trillion, a loss of about 17.8% of its economy. So do you think Catalonia could survive? So let me know which countries you think would be able to survive and what other kinds of videos you want to see next.